Greetings, Scott of Gold back again with another video. Um, I was looking in the comments section of the Kung Fu Panda 4 uh, review that I did, and someone was suggesting I should make a rating of all the films. Now, of course, I am not going to count TV series at this time, but I will, however, count just the movies and well the general like short films other than that let's get on into it i'm going to try to explain as detail as possible without consuming too much time um i'll probably label factors rather than just listing a whole thing now let's start off with secrets of the furious five now i have to be honest it's been a while since i've seen this film now, when I last recall, it was actually, if I recall, it tells the backdrops of, you know, them, the members. Now, aside from another film, which was Secrets of the Secrets of the Scroll, that was another one, which, if I have to put these right next to each other, uh, between the two, I would say Secrets of the Scroll would have, was far better. Um, the Secrets of the Furious 5 was decent, I'll give it that, but it wasn't like a proper, like it had a similar animation style, like it was 2D. So, I guess what I can safely say is, even though they're both backdrop explanations of the stories, both of them are good, although one is slightly better, I'm gonna have to say... For Secrets of the Scroll, we'll most likely get an A tier, while Furious 5 gets at least a B. That's fine and good. Um, so since the, the reason why I rated both of them at once is because, well, they're similar in a lot of ways. Both of them tell the stories of the Furious 5, and, well... It's, you know, it is how it is. It's pretty nice that they tried to explain it. Moving on. So, next up we have Pan Kung Fu Panda Holiday. Now, a Christmas special from 2010. Honestly, I really liked this one. It was, it literally took a lot of, um... Like, it was right after the first Kung Fu Panda, but it was before the second one. This one was just amazing. Like, they brought the actual film style into um, the whole thing. Some, similar to Masters of um, Secrets of the Masters. So, holiday special, I would safely say... Although the plot was a little meh, like, I know it's supposed to be like, you know, Poe trying to fulfill like a tradition or something, and it ends up backfiring against Shifu, and he eventually embraces it. It's a, the plot armor isn't really there, although I would still say it is a very solid film. Not quite as good as the movie, like the mainstream movies, but I would safely say um, this film gets a respectable B. The only reason why I didn't get a C is because of the, you know, quality style of the filming. If it was 2D, that would have gotten a C, probably. Moving on. Um, oh, that's Legends of Awesomeness. We, we're not counting TV series right now. So, yeah. Uh... I think I'm going to have to review the Kung Fu Panda films in a very specific order. Now, unfortunately, I don't see the fourth one here currently. So, wait till the end, and I'll give a fair rating on that. So, starting with the first one. The one that started it all. Honestly, there is no... There is nothing better than a good start. Granted, uh, the sequel... I will mention shortly is definitely far better than the first 
third and fourth. Like, the second one is just groundbreakingly good. But the first one was a very... It took a lot of, like, fair um, liberties towards concepts of, you know, who's going to choose, like, the Dragon Warrior and stuff. And they had Tai Long, which was the first villain... In the whole franchise. Which was amazing. Honestly. This film was a huge hit. Basically. So I would safely say. This film. Definitely deserves an A. Now if I had to make an S tier. Which I probably should have. Um, that would have probably. Just stayed an A. While the second one would have gotten. You know much more. Now to the second one. The second Kung Fu Panda film. This one, well, honestly, you know what? I might as well just make a um, an S tier because this this film cannot be matched under any circumstances. This film is so amazing. I can't even express to you how amazing the second one is. This film really brought out the true colors of the whole franchise. Granted, other ones have done too, but no no Kung Fu Panda film to date matches the second one. And I'm sure you guys are figuring out the reason why. Yes, it is nice to see Poe. It is nice to see the Furious Five. It's a nice new setting. But the most biggest thing of all for that film is the villain. Shen has by far the most complex backstory, the complex situation out of the entire franchise. Granted, Tai Long and Kai were pretty brutal in themselves, but this guy was literally the villain that helped define Poe of who he is and how he became who he was. Especially early on in his infant years. So, no question, this deserves an S rank. I'm sorry for not featuring this rank early on, but this this really deserves it. This is a film worthy of that role. Now, moving on, Kung Fu Panda 3. This one, not as good as the second one. This is when, I don't want to say it started going downhill, because it was still in the good category. Now, granted... The plot was decent, the villain was actually very intriguing in himself, a spirit warrior who can take chi, that was the first, I think, ever proper mention of chi as, you know, being like a mainstream thing, even though it was seen before, and I think it was back to the first Kung Fu Panda, but because it was so lightly addressed, this film actually brought it to the forefront of the franchise so honestly this film i wanted to say it could have been great to see like the other villains maybe have their chi taken but they didn't really i think they mentioned tai long's chi was taken but that was it we only got like maybe i guess like a cameo object representing him so that was about it um so, overall, I think Kung Fu Panda 3 deserves a respectable A tier. So, it's about on par with the first one, basically. It's a definitely a solid film, although I think after this film, things kind of started going downhill, not going to lie, which I will mention in a moment. Now, qu very quickly, Secrets of the Masters, another 2D film. That came out back in 2016. The same... Actually, no, not 2016. Um, 2011, I think? 2012? This reintroduced the Wu Sisters. Which, honestly, that was actually a nice touch they did. It kind of referenced the old game in a way. Which, I'm going to be honest, I never played the old game. I only saw a gameplay of it. Which was very good. That was when they were first introduced, although in this one, I guess 
it was the first time I ever see one of the Wu sisters with heterochromia, which I think in the original one they didn't have that. So that was that's an interesting take they did on it. Um, honestly, I think if it wasn't for the Wu sisters, this probably would have gotten a lower tier. But because the plot was good, the villains were good, the style was respectable, even though it wasn't on par with the movies, this also, I would safely say, deserves a lower A tier. I'd probably give it an A-, minus, but the, the only saving grace, of course, would have been the villains. Not much shells. Uh, Legends of Awesomeness, as I mentioned, we're skipping. Now, for Kung Fu Panda 4, honestly, if, because it's not here, just pretend it is. Now, say if, you know, when that movie came out, a lot of people were anticipated. Now, granted, some people were concerned about the whole franchise's direction. About, instead of just focusing on Chi, it's a chameleon who imitates other masters including Poe. My problem with this, and honestly, I don't want to blame the villain entirely, but the pl there is no plot armor with this villain. There was nothing. It was empty. It was like a hollow shell that was... Like, the shell was good, but it had nothing in it. I think maybe they could have done something a little more, you know straightforward maybe instead of someone who can imitate a master which i think we've seen it all before it gets old especially the chameleon the chameleon offered nothing like all they wanted from her was she wanted to learn kung fu but because she couldn't do it you know she was deemed too small by the masters that's where she started drifting off that is a ridiculous plot behind her that it's stupid they could have done something so much better so because of the villain that really i guess kind of brings the film down the only saving grace for kung fu panda 4 was you guessed it the past villains making a cameo or at least they're reappearing in multiple scenes near the end which was honestly it was good to see them all again. My biggest disappointment though, and honestly this film does have a lot of it. Despite the quality of the film being good, the plot in general isn't terrible. It could be better, but the villain kind of held it back a bit. There was no voices for the other two villains. J.K. Simmons and Gary Oldman was not there. Now, I would assume it was because Gary Oldman, after, I think, Oppenheimer, uh, he wanted to retire. Which is understandable, but do you think maybe they could have found someone that sounded just like them? Or just someone that could, you know, carry that role for just one simple moment and give them maybe a couple or a few lines? I mean, if it if those... If they just had even at least one line for each character of those main three villains, this film would have been better. Just hands down. Granted, I would say that the final fight too is also a little underwhelming. But I'm not going to get into that because I'm sure many of you know of how underwhelming it is. So, in conclusion, I... I only liked the film. I didn't love it like the other three. So, it is definitely running out of steam, as what the critics would say. But, honestly, is it a worthy successor to the original? No. But is it a travesty? Not necessarily. So, honestly, also, I forgot to mention, another set of characters that never got voices not even one of these characters got voices at the end the furious five they made a cameo at the end and they were helping poe train zen to become the next dragon warrior and well that was abysmal because they didn't get voices so that's another point docked from them so in general film's not terrible but 
it could have been far more than what we anticipated. It really should have, like, gotten remade in a proper way. Like a Zack Snyder Justice League cut. So, in conclusion, I'm going to safely say this film deserves a C. The reason why it's not a B is because the villains and the, some of the other characters that were intro reintroduced or reappeared never got voices. If it wasn't, if it was that case, they would have been at least a B. But, um, so yeah, that would pretty much be my tier rating. Sorry if I didn't have the full capacity of all the films, but Kung Fu Panda 4... Last, but I guess not completely least. Gotta see. So, I hope you enjoyed this little rating. And also, thank you so much for helping me reach 500 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And you're watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys.